If you're looking to buy the new Mac Studio, you're in the right place because in this video, we're gonna look at all the different specs on it and help you decide what the right one is for you depending on your use case. I will have links to buy my favorite configurations of this computer and for all my favorite Mac accessories in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. When you start out, you will see that there's two options. You can either get the M4 Max or the M3 Ultra chips. And the main difference between the two of these is the M3 Ultra is gonna give you way more RAM out of the box and it's also gonna give you better GPU and CPU performance and also the higher neural engine on it. Now, I would not recommend most people buying the M3 Ultra because the M4 Max is gonna give really great GPU performance and it's gonna give you the better single core CPU performance. So for most people, I would just recommend getting the M4 Max Max Studio. Now, as you start to scroll down, you'll see that the first upgrade you have to choose between is the chip that it comes with. If you're doing a lot of video editing, that's when I would recommend going to the one that says plus $300, the M4 Max that includes the 40 core GPU and the 16 core CPU. This one's just gonna do better at more graphics intensive processes, especially if you're doing a lot of multi-cam editing or doing high resolution video editing. 3D apps like Blender are also gonna appreciate the 40 core GPU as well. And again, I would not even mess with the M3 Ultra. If you really know you need it, you're gonna know that you need that. Now, if you upgrade the M4 Max with the 40 core GPU, it is automatically gonna bump your RAM up from 36 gigabytes to 48 gigabytes, which you are gonna have to pay for that additional RAM, which is unfortunate. Now, again, if you don't need that higher GPU performance, 36 gigabytes of RAM is gonna be plenty for most people. I've been running 32 gigabytes of RAM on my M1 Max MacBook Pro for a few years now. I've never had any issues even with editing high resolution video files. So again, if you don't plan on doing a lot of video editing, there's really no need to upgrade the RAM. And in fact, it won't even let you upgrade the RAM unless you get the 16 core CPU and the 40 core GPU. So for most people, I would recommend sticking with the 48 gigs, but if you know you're gonna be doing even more intensive work, or if you're gonna be doing a lot of multitasking, that's when you should get the 64 gigabyte option instead. I picked the 64 gigabyte option just because I plan on having this computer for a long time, and it felt like it was a worthwhile upgrade because I do throw a lot of different apps at once at the computer. The next choice that we have to make between is how much storage that we get. Now, Apple's storage prices are unfortunate, to spend an extra $600 to get two terabytes really hurts, especially when a two terabyte NVMe is very cheap. And you can get really fast Thunderbolt or USB 4 enclosures that allow you to have very fast SSDs. I've got some of my favorites in the description as well. I would recommend most people go ahead and upgrade to the one terabyte though, because this is gonna give you a lot more wiggle room on your computer for applications or if you got larger project files and you don't wanna constantly be offloading stuff to external SSDs. I personally bought the two terabyte version of this though because I do a lot of multi-cam editing and it is really handy to be able to do it straight off the computer. But we are in the desktop world and we also can always have an SSD close by for a much better price. So it's really hard to actually recommend getting anything over one or two terabytes. You can get a very fast four terabyte external SSD for about $400 and get way more storage. So it's hard to recommend going all the way up to two terabytes but 512 will fill up really fast, especially if you're using this professionally. So just try to decide if you're doing a lot of projects that will quickly fill your computer up to one terabyte, that's when I recommend getting the two terabytes so you always have the wiggle room. But if you're never crossing over the 500 or 700 gigabyte territory, then the one terabyte is gonna be a great option for you. And it's gonna save you the $400 that you can buy a really nice external SSD. And then on the pre-installed software, I'd never recommend getting that because anytime you decide you need software, it's best to start off with the trial of it. Or if you've already bought Final Cut or Logic, then you can get those on your Apple ID and just download them as soon as you set the computer up. So there's everything you need to know about configuring the new Mac Studio. If you got any questions or if you think I missed something or maybe you need more details on something, leave a comment down below. I'd love to help you out. If you're interested in buying my favorite Mac Studios or my favorite accessories for the Mac Studio, I do have links to buy all those in the description below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.